Hey, I'm Don the DM, and welcome to my channel. Uh, this is an inaugural video in a series called Making the Game Your Own, where I am going to give you a few of my tips for uh, trying to customize your game and get your players being a little bit more creative at your table. So, uh, one of the things that Tash has included in, um, in the back of the book is some uh, ideas on how to run uh, session zero. So getting uh, people familiar with what the game is going to be or the, what the campaign is going to be all about, uh, what everybody expects to get out of it, uh, some safety rules and things like that. And they talk a little bit about um, how to bring the party together in terms of party formation and backstory and things like that. And they have a really great set of tips for doing so. I have been doing something at my table for a while, which kind of adds a little bit to this, which is I tend to, for the last 15 minutes or so of session zero, Reserve that time for an interactive improv backstory creation. So the idea is I would have probably the patron of the party or an NPC sort of set up the story by, you know, setting the stage and then prompting one of the characters to sort of take over the story from there and make up um some portion of the tale and then at some point in their storytelling they would turn it over to another player character uh who would continue the story in character pass it on to a third etc until everyone has had a chance to uh, add to the tale so needless to say everyone's put on the spot <laughs> Nobody knows where this is going to go. Uh, it sort of makes sense a lot of times. Uh, I find myself having to jump in a little bit from time to time just to sort of uh, prompt people to answer some questions or prompt them on how to include the next person in the story. But it always turns out to be a good laugh and something that the party remembers and it gives them uh a chance to relax if they're uh, a bunch of strangers which is actually quite common in this uh age of online D, &D and uh and hopefully gives them a good story that they'll remember well into the campaign so uh without further ado i'd like to present to you a backstory improv session that my party for lost dragons of Feld fandelver uh did in their session zero. Hope you enjoy. Gundren has had a few. He's excited for the trip tomorrow. He's excited to be able to offer you um, a good gig after maybe three or four like piddly ones where they were just weren't all that interesting for you. So he raises his tankard one last time and he takes a long, long draw on it, coughs a little bit, hiccups. <laughs> kind of looks a little bit sheepish and gets a little teary-eyed as he looks around at you all and he he hoists up his mug and says you know some of you i've known a long time some of you maybe not so long but boy we've had some some good times along the way uh i wish i wish you were accompanying me tomorrow um it'd be great imagine if we if we met a big orc king or something like that, we could have our fun with him uh, or give him a good chase and maybe sick an ox on him. Uh, that'd be great fun. Ha ha. Pounds the table a bit. Um, and then he looks around at y'all and he's like, uh, you know, it's good that I met you lot, and it's good that you get along the way you do. I can't think of a finer crew to have as some of my best. Um, you know, just being here all together, knowing that there could be a little fun tomorrow, just 
makes me think of, you know, remember, remember last year around the Harvest Festival, you know, when we were hanging out at uh, that Tarmaloon Market, remember that with all the weird shit, they always have weird shit, but boy, it was weirder that day. I don't know where that stuff came from. Maybe Chult? Um, Bellamy, you've been to Chult. It's... Uh, it's indeed quite a strange place. Uh, very different lifestyle than up here. Very, very oh, interesting, yeah. beautiful art. Um, yeah. So, um, look, I don't know. He, and at this point, he's kind of zoning out a bit from, from the AL, so you're not even sure who he's talking about. I don't know what the two of you were thinking when you got that thing going, but... It's a damn good thing that your friends here jumped in to bail you out. And he kind of chuckles almost to himself. And he sweeps his gaze around the room as if trying to remember which two of you it was and what the hell you were up to. I like to point out that my, my character is a kleptomaniac. <laughs> Oh, oh I could have possibly. <laughs> Bellamy, what were you up to that day? I saw something shiny. I'm not gonna lie. They were, uh, they were, uh, they were selling some uh, some good stuff. Some good good stuff. I uh, I saw uh, this compass that I I lost my compass uh, one day. I don't know what happened. Maybe I gambled, maybe I drank too much, and maybe I just forgot that I gave it away. But, um, you know, there was jewelry, and I couldn't help myself. I really couldn't. I got sticky fingers. <laughs> but uh, somebody was watching me. This little girl, this little snitch. Uh, but uh, I, I ended up getting locked away. Uh, I'm not very persuasive. <clears throat> oh, I was just uh, putting that jewelry in my pocket. No, I wasn't stealing it. <laughs> wink, wink. And Bellamy? Yes? Who of your friends visited you outside your jail cell that night? And what did they do to cheer you up until a little bit later that night when something else happened? Avian? Avian? Yeah. Sorry, I was taking a drink. Also, I'd like to apologize. I thought a kleptomaniac was an arsonist for a second. I had a brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Um, no, I just, I just steal. I have a habit of stealing. Well, there's nothing like a good fire to get guards distracted. And um, if your drinks weren't so damn strong, Bellamy, I might have been able to catch my batons properly. Oh, then go and do a blanket, sweetheart. Um, uh, sorry. Who's that woman? <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tell me if your drinks weren't so damn strong, maybe I would be able to actually keep control of my fire, but I'd say it worked out for our best advantage. Mm. And why is that? Uh, one of the stalls caught fire. Oh, uh, no, 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 I'm in the guard's room, sorry. Um, I lit one of the guard's robes on fire when I was uh, trying to do a little seductive dance to get Bellamy out of there, and instead I ended up lighting a guard on fire. It was very entertaining. <laughs> Probably not for the guard, <laughs> but for us, it was quite fun. 10 out of 10. And why was it so awesome that you know who was there? So, so, me? uh, no, uh, sorry, Avain, who was it that came to the rescue of you and the guard and made sure you didn't get locked up as well? 
Uh, let's say... Trent. No more drinks were strong, but shouldn't be that strong. <laughs> you Maybe know, I'd sorry. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> sorry. Uh, I don't know if it's because of... Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Oh. My computer locked me out. Can you guys still hear me? Yep. Okay. Sorry, my computer went uh, black. Um, if it weren't for Trent, I think I'd be in there as well. Oh no. <laughs> You're not leaving us this time. <laughs> <laughs> no sir, we Bob. Courage, my friend. <sighs> Take a swig, it'll help you. I've taken like five. <laughs> I would explain to Saturn. <laughs> well, I uh, I approached the guard with my um my, my cask of ale, and uh, I thought that would be a good deterrent for the fire, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's strange, alcohol wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> so I did what anyone would in my position. I, uh, I picked him up on my shoulder, which kind of burnt a little bit, and uh, I ran to the nearest lake. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't too happy, but at least he wasn't on fire. <laughs> <laughs> which 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 actually wound up creating the perfect distraction so Corey could Well, that was absolutely not a perfect distraction. I had to go back and clear your mess. I had to, to bribe every guard on duty with cupcakes. And I love my cupcakes, and I had to give them away for your shake. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but in the end, they were so delicious, so they agreed to just look away and let us go through the front door. So, yeah, ended up quite so well. Ah, Trent, bless you always having a cask and, uh, and a vein. Ah, good job as ever. Uh, your dancing sure had them enthralled. Well, until it all went up in smoke, so to say. Um, and Bellamy... It's, it's like Yvain said, if your drinks weren't so darned good, we'd all have so much better control. Thank goodness Corey is around with her cupcakes so often. Uh, that reminds me, we have to get some extra flour when we're down in Fendelin. We don't want her running out. And that, that sweet, sweet sugar that we get from Malorn Island, uh... That makes the best icing, doesn't it, Corey? Oh, absolutely. And you should know best. <laughs> anyway, bless y'all for making this old dwarf's life so much more interesting. Um, it'd be boring if I was just a merchant making tons of dough. Ha ha ha.